Hi everyone, Darren here. Got a uh, Lucas starter motor that was just really turning kind of slow. Um, it was working, but it was just slow. So I'm gonna go through this and give it a give it a clean up and see why um, it was turning so slow. Now this one is date stamped uh, '85, so a fairly new Lucas starter motor. But um, as you can see, yeah, it's just been a ton of exposure, corrosion, so I'm going to take it apart, give it a clean, and uh, oh yeah, the teeth on this Bendix aren't the best, but they were working, like I said, they were working, so I'm going to leave it alone, but this is very, very stiff, you can see it doesn't snap back cleanly, so this is all gummed up, uh, anyway, I'm going to give it a clean, and um, you guys enjoy this one. So I've gone ahead and pulled the armature apart, and again, this bit of a bit of a clean here. But I noticed that the windings are heavily worn. Um, I put the straight edge on here. Maybe you can see. Anyway, it's uh, it's really well grooved. I'll see if I can flatten this out before I put it back together, just to make this a little bit smoother and nicer, but um, yeah, this star has definitely seen some years of use. Yeah, there you go, you can see the dishing. That's pretty heavy. Well, I decided to try and dress this surface. Um, still has some pretty bad scores in it, but it's a lot flatter across here and in the center here. I also went ahead and dressed the uh, surface of these. You can see there's still uh, still some scores in it, but again, I wasn't going for perfection here. I just wanted it to be cleaner to match, match this surface. So hopefully that's enough to get this thing back up and running again. So I've kind of blown everything apart here, as you can see. Um, started cleaning some of the bits, took the Bendix apart, etc. Um, here's the housing. Just a quick run over with the wire wheel. Um, two important pieces on this. One, make sure that these aren't damaged and there's continuity through here. And also, the way that the starter grounds is that all of the armatures are, or windings here are grounded together here and then ground to the body using this um, this rivet which comes through here so always a good idea to you know double check to make sure that this is solidly you know mounted and not rusted through etc um, another thing is that I make sure that this surface is incredibly clean so that you know these are grounded to here when this is attached to the aluminum plate you know, this is the mating surface, so the mating surface here needs to be really clean here, so you have good ground contact to the aluminum plate, and then um, the flywheel side is here, so this surface needs to be clean as well as the flywheel surface. And once you've done that, then you've got good ground contact through the body of the flywheel housing through the starter to the windings. I think that was actually the biggest problem with this, is that this was very uh, corroded along here. So when I reassemble this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thin smear of dielectric grease along here and then reassemble it so that it maintains its good continuity for a long period of time. On this end, um, this just had the paper insulator, so there's no grounding happening up here in this, this top section, so I'm not worried about this. But I will put a bead of sealant to keep any water from getting in from this side. Now, on the main windings here, uh, I, you know, I, I put this in my mill and I clean up the face a bit. I didn't take out all the grooves because I was worried about it going too far, um, too deep. It's just really, really heavily worn. So I made it as flat as I, I, I dared to make it and I left a little bit of the grooving here. Um, but otherwise I've cleaned up all this surface and then I just went through and used the wire wheel to clean up all these bearing surfaces and the sliding section for the Bendix. Um, when I was showing this 
initially, before I started cleaning it, this was moving very slowly. There was just a lot of grease and dirt in here. But um, yeah, you make sure to clean all the grooves, clean clean the spiral here. And um, I'm also gonna run, run a brush and solvent through this to make sure all this is clean internally. Now, one of the things about the Bendix is that the teeth on this are worn. Um, normally I would replace this with a new new Bendix for a starter that I need to rebuild for another motor, but on this particular unit, because it's going back on the same engine that it was on before, I'm just going to leave these these teeth alone. But you can buy new ones of these, so if you need one, you can just replace it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, just gave the hardware a bit of a cleanup. Oh, the lid. Yeah, I just took all the rust off the lid, again, with the wire wheel. Um, and again, I I just did a light servicing on these these two brushes here, but um, that's pretty much all I did for this. And you can see the paper insulators crumbling to pieces, but the important parts are still intact. So all this needs left on the here is uh, just some paint, really. So uh, I'm gonna take the rest of these parts over to the solvent tank, give it a bit of a clean final cleaning, and then um, shoot some paint on these parts here that need to be painted. And once that's all cured, I'll start reassembling everything. So I've started reassembling, put the Bendix back on the spring and all this, these parts here. And I've gone in and greased this, uh, this bearing here. And I just wanted to show how fast this Bendix returns. That's pretty good. So um, I'm waiting for the paint to dry right now, but once that's dry, We'll go ahead and reassemble the, the rear section and get all the electrics hooked up again. Well, now that the paint's all dry, you can see it came out pretty nice. Um, just need to, you know, add the uh, dielectric crease to this surface and reassemble everything. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, just wanted to mention about the, uh, the main power post here. You know, it's got this plastic insulator there to isolate the post from the body housing and then you fit the split ring over that then there's this circuit board type material to isolate that from the big washer and the lock washer then the first jam nut so that's the order that this should be in to keep it all all happy. Um, just want to make sure you realize that because sometimes when you take everything apart you might forget the order, but that's how it should go. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble the rest of this and then I'll be able to take it and test it out on the, um, on the engine on the bench. And here it is. One clean lubricated Lucas starter. So it's now time to take this out and give it a good test. So I installed that rebuilt starter onto this test motor here and I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to a, a battery over there and then I'm going to hook up my clamp meter, measure the current draw on this thing and see where we are. So I've got the clamp meter set up here to read the peak current load and I've just got all the cables and stuff hooked up to this temporarily but I think it should be sufficient to test. So once I ground this out I should be able to get it to crank. And I need to adjust the scale because it's more than 40 amps. So I'll switch to 400 max. All right. That thing's pulling 133 amps. At least it sounded pretty good. It was a lot faster than it was when I first started, so I'm going to call that a win on this starter motor. And I'm going to leave it in place because I'm going to be using this to do any other tests with this uh, test engine. I'm going to use the starter motor to run it. So I did the test one more time. I got 142 amps. Still, quite a lot of current running through this thing. Um, 
I'm kind of impressed, to be honest, given the quality of the jumper cables that it was even managed to, able to do that much. If you guys thought this video was interesting or helpful, let me know in the comments below. Um, I certainly enjoyed rebuilding the starter motor, and I've got some alternators here that are going to come out in a few, few weeks, rebuild videos. But if you liked it, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.